Hey guys, welcome to this uh, Tsunami Faithful exclusive. And as always, when this man comes, I have to uh, interview him. So, do we know who he is? Who are you again? I'm Ian Sinclair. I act sometimes. You act sometimes? I sometimes, when they let me. So you're here in Rochester. So yeah. Welcome. Thank welcome you. I really liked it. Um, I heard they took you out for a garbage plate. I, I insisted. As soon as I landed, I said, I gotta have a garbage plate. And I got a uh, classic, two burgers. I like how you guys call it, uh, what was it, meat sauce or hot sauce? Yeah. It's chili. <laughs> you know that, right? It's just chili. It's, it's good. It's good. It is solid. Uh, but yeah, no, I was explaining it to my girlfriend. I'm like, so it's macaroni salad with some like home fries and burger. For those of y'all who don't know Rochester, because this is, you know, yeah. um, macaroni salad, home fries, you know, a little cubes of potatoes uh and then what like two cheeseburgers and cheese and then the, the, you can mix it up anything pretty much it was great i really liked it and had i had that been an option when i was in college i would be way bigger than i am right now like that i would have eaten that all the time but like I'm getting old so like about three quarters of the way through i'm like okay, okay. <laughs> but yeah that's uh i was i was told that that is the delicacy i gotta try along here you're gonna give me that and they're gonna give me a uh was it a white hot? Yeah, I'm gonna get a white hot too. Good. Got to try yeah. Good. Uh, so how are you dealing with the temperature? Ah, it's not bad. I'm half Canadian. Half so Canadian. half of me is dealing with it. Great. Uh, <laughs> no, it's good. I, I did I did wear, wear my smart wool silks when I flew in because I was like, oh, it's gonna be so cold. It's not bad. Yeah. I'm, I'm not wearing them today. So that's that's how I'm dealing with it. It's, it's good. It's. Besides, uh, kind of like Texas has the best air conditioning in the world, uh, y'all got great heating systems. So, y'all know how to deal with this. I've been warm all day, everybody's in t-shirts. Right. So, um, I, I, all the interviews that we've done with you, because we've done a lot, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, we might like you or something. You know? Ah. <laughs> um, you know, I really haven't asked you, how did you get started with all this? Like, was, was this something that you always wanted to do, or? Anime in general? Yeah. Well, voice acting. Voice acting. Um, I mean, I was always the kid who made the weird, stupid, silly voices and tried to, like, do impressions at parties and stuff. Uh, so, I, I mean, I always... That's how I got my attention when I was a kid. Uh, and then I started doing bands, and that was really, really fun, and I loved being on stage. And then I went to TCU, and uh, a professor said, you should try out for these one-act plays. I did. He said, you're going to be an actor, right? I go, oh, okay. And so I decided to be an actor. And then a fellow student uh, who was working at Funimation at the time was like, hey, man, you want to come watch me work? I, I work over at uh, you know, Funimation. I said, yeah, that'd be great to watch it someday. And uh, I believe Sabat was directing that day. And he just kind of goes, hey, man, you're an actor? And I go, yeah. Do you want to say a line? I said, yeah. And I just said, yes, sir, as a chauffeur and uh, I think it was like a gunslinger girl thing. Uh, and uh, that was it. They, were, I, they weren't ever gonna talk to me again, but that chauffeur came back and said it again. So Sabbath said, hey man, what's your friend's number? They gave me a contract and that's, that's the only reason I have a career. Like I went off and did a bunch of theater and other stuff while still doing anime as my kind of my day job. And, uh, and I've just kept at it for 15 years. So have you have you been doing that along with voice acting, still acting, doing some stuff? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as an actor, you have to do everything uh, if you want to pay the bills. Like it, acting is a acting is not a consistent paycheck. It just it's just never going to be. I mean, sometimes you do get good, you know, shows that will be fairly. Sometimes you get a one piece, and you're doing that, you know, fairly often. <laughs> but you know you. You got to do your other things. So I do a lot of uh, commercials uh, and narrations and children's books. And speaking of commercials, mm -hmm. you did one recently um, for Fox Fox Sports. Yeah, yeah. Met Marty Turco. How was that? It was great. It was great. I was a Stars fan when I was a kid, and so I got to do a commercial where I met Marty Turco. I just like they called up and they said, "Hey, do you want to do a commercial with Marty Frickin' Turco?" And I said, "Yes, yes, I do." And like I did it, and it was crazy. And he's hoisted me up, and he's a le he's a legend. He was a he was a hockey legend, and he was the nicest dude. And just it was just this weird two and a half hours of my life. 
and it was weird, and then it's done, and then uh, acting's weird. Yeah. I had to rip open my shirt. Did it on the first take. They did not cut the the buttons. They're like, good luck. I was like, okay, everybody get back. I'm listening. Ripped open my shirt, super proud. It's awesome. It's not that hard. You just gotta get here and pull it directly out. That's not that I mean, the Hulk Hogan? The Hulk Hogan. 100% Hulkamania. 100%. So, did, did anybody know that you were like a voice actor when you went to the commercial? Oh, no. I mean, it's another benefit of this job is that no, nobody knows or cares. 90% of people don't. Like, every once in a while, there was there was one dude on set who saw something I had, and he was like, "Oh man, you gonna see Broly?" And like we talked we talked about the movie for a minute, and then uh, I just kind of on the way out because he was really awesome. I was like, "I'm I'm actually the voice of Weeds, man. It was really good to meet you." And he's like, "Ah," and so I gave him a little <laughs> signature. But like that's if somebody comes up to me and doesn't like ask for anything and just talks to me about Dragon Ball for a while and is just awesome. I will usually do what I can to make their day, or like, uh, but no, most of the time I'm going to GameStop in my slippers and my Jake the Dog shirt and I'm my Goku hat. I told him, he's lucky I'm dressed up today. <laughs> I was going to be wearing my Goku hat. I'm wearing slippers because they had a 9 a.m. panel. And this is me being <laughs> super aggressive. It's but wearing the, slippers. But, yeah. but the con's really good. It's, no, it's a great con. <laughs> Actually, a fantastic panel. Like, I was so surprised. Go RIT students for being up at a panel at 9.30 a.m. Like, I would not. I don't care what actor you are. I'm not going to go to a 9.30 a.m. panel on a Sunday. And yet they were all there and they had great questions. It's been a great crowd. So, obviously, we'll, we'll talk about Dragon Ball Super. Oh, yeah. Your Wii's in there. Yeah. Um, you had talked about, we, we've talked about this a couple of times where as a kid, you were growing up with Dragon Ball Z, right? How did, so how does it feel to be part of that and also be part of the Broly movie that just came out? It's a, it is weird and surreal. I have to remind myself, and I reminded myself before we did this interview, that I gotta stop talking about how like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm in this, and it's just this, this like constant lack of like, I, I just, it's incredible, I don't believe it, it's surreal. And I gotta remind myself, I've been doing this for like six years and I gotta accept that Whis is a part of it. But I, I don't, I don't because it's Dragon Ball. And, and for me, that's, that's this thing I watched as a kid. And it exists over here and it has all my friends, Goku and Vegeta and the baddies and all this. And it's this, this beautiful little thing over here. And then Super is a weird, absurd dream that I'm living. Um, <laughs> that like I'm gonna wake up from at some point and somebody's like, oh honey, you never got in that. You've been in a coma for the last 10 years. <laughs> uh, it's been the best coma dream ever. And, and so I don't, I don't accept that. And still, even when I watch Super and I see Beerus and Whis, I don't feel I have any perspective on them because I can't see them from the outside. I look at that blue boy and I go, it's me. Yeah. It, it's, it's weird. Uh, I adore Super as a show. It feels like the next day. Uh, it feels like Toriyama in a way that uh, I'll say grander things didn't. That's me trying to, like DC, kind of say that. <laughs> uh, that certain other things might not have uh, sounded like or felt like Toriyama, um, but it did. It felt like him. I mean, right off the bat, they're getting toilet water. And, and they're dinosaurs and stuff. It's like, it's right there. You gotta go, the water park that Vegeta promised. Um, so for me, like watching that stuff is like, you know, it, it's like going home. It's, but I, no, I have no perspective. It's a weird fever dream. I love it. It's, it's incredible. And I have, it's hard for me to believe it's real. And if there's more coming up or if that ever gets to happen more, I just pray that he's in it. Uh, but I love it so much. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like and Toei keeps seems to go back and forth, or they're just not saying anything at the moment. Like, there's going to be more super. So I'm praying, man. Like, they, they don't tell me. Like, I I will find out when I'm called to go and like, oh hey, we're doing a bit. Wait, is this new? Yeah. Are we doing new? Or are we doing like pickups or DLC? What what's happening? And then I'll probably but scream and freak. I out. think a lot of people don't don't realize like you guys don't find out till like almost the last second, oh, or yeah. if it shows up on the internet. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? So. Oh yeah. No, we I I have learned most of my like, I came up with a lot of theories on Super during you know the first airing in Japan by going online and reading theories and, and doing all that kind of stuff. 
So how, how does it feel to have, not just Super on uh, Toonami, but other shows, like I believe you're in My Hero Academia as well? I am, I am. Uh, we had Dandy back up there for a while, yes, we got we Black Clover. I love Toonami, man. It's, I, I tell people it's, it has done so much for the, the medium and promoting, uh, promoting anime as a whole. Like, there's a whole generation of kids who are, are shown anime for the first time because it's there. It's on TV, it is available. Um, you don't have to download anything, you don't have to whatever, it's just there. If you go over to your grandma's house, she got cable, you can still go and watch it. Uh, and it is a profound honor to be a, a part of that. Um, I, I don't know, man. It's bizarre. It's like well, when you go from watching it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to accept. My brain won't allow me to accept <laughs> it. I think it's afraid I'll get cocky or something. So it just like cuts off that part of the brain. It's like, you're nobody. Don't worry about it. We're all going to find out you suck. <laughs> so um, one thing that we like to ask, too, is it, do you have any tips for anybody that's trying to get into voice acting? Uh, yeah. Um, diversify within voice acting. Uh, don't pigeonhole yourself into just being video game or anime or commercial. Uh, only by doing every bit of it can you survive. Can you, can you thrive? Uh, your day job is sitting there and doing narrations about faucets and and the lacings of certain shoes <laughs> in a fake British accent that just doesn't sound, and stuff like that. That's what you do to put food in your mouth. Uh, anime is, is kind of more what you do for your emotional fulfillment. Um, but you have to diversify to, to, make, to make your money. And uh, past that, understand that there is no made it. Success is illusory. Uh, understand that your body of work is more important than anything. Uh, be a good person, because talent will take you so far. But if you're a jerk, no one will work with you. So um, take as many classes as you can. Uh, don't listen to the advice of people who aren't as successful as you want to be. If there is somebody and they're gonna, they're like, I'm gonna teach you and I'm gonna charge you hundreds of dollars. And you're like, cool, what have you done? They're like, I was in the background of something. You're like, I don't need to learn from you. I need to learn from Bob Bergman. I need to learn from Porky Pig. I need to learn from, so find, find people who are at who are balling at the level that you want to ball at, like and Steve then learn from you. Like it's like Steve Bloom. Go take Steve Bloom's class. Like I want to take. I might take Steve Bloom's class now. That I think about it. <laughs> like yeah, it, the, take take from them. Don't don't let some random person who has ideas uh, make you go sit in a room and and paint your magic spirit animal so you can find out how to do an OM react. Go take classes. Basically, they had to be somebody that's been doing this for a long time. Yeah, and if your friend is like, I can make you a demo, I've got Pro Tools. No, if you're serious about this, go to a studio where they make commercials, because that person literally has to put up with the current market trends and all that day by day. That is the person who knows what today's market is about. So, I know your buddy likes to produce uh, your indie Norwegian prog hop rock. <laughs> uh, and that's great, and he's real good. But uh, they don't know what the current trends are in commercials. Uh, get a good commercial down. And the one thing that I've kind of heard from multiple voice actors is having like an acting background as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a lot of technique. It's like, you know, how there, there are probably sprinters out there that if you talk to them about how, to, how, how they run, there's like a long understanding of like how, like, oh no, yeah, my foot lands like this. And they don't even think about it anymore. They just do it and like, oh no, when you jump over a hurdle, you do this with your hip and you do all that kind of stuff. Saying you want to be a voice actor and not training is like saying you want to be a Olympic sprinter, hurdler, and being like, I've got legs, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, you, you could. It might not go well for the first long amount of time, but if you go and do training, then you're not gonna fall on your face. And you only get a first shot, you know, once. So uh, training's very good. And you know, you wanna be a good actor. You don't just wanna sound cool. Cause there are a lot of people who sound really cool, can't act, and they lose out to the people who can act. So, take acting classes. 
be a badass actor. And then also you're a badass actor at that point. And they got to act. Acting is fun. Like the weird silly stuff is fun to do. Improv is fun. Go have fun. Life should be fun. Have fun. Guys.